Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. This is your host, Ricardo Silva. Today we're going to be doing some steps in MoGraph. So the first thing that you need to do is create your individual step. In this case, I'm going to be using a cube that uh, the X size, I'm going to make it, I'm going to just leave it at 200. And the Y size, I'm going to make it, let's say, uh, 10 or 15 centi uh, centimeters high. And the size on the z-axis, I'm going to make it 600. The reason why I'm making it 200 deep is because there are chances that we're going to be seeing the sides of some of these uh, steps. So I'm, at this moment, I am trying to make sure that the, uh, the depth is going to cover whatever is going to be visible from the sides for my stairs. Uh, I can change that later if I want. Now, if I press the Option key and I go to the MoGraph cloner, I get the usual linear cloning of my three objects that uh, it comes by default. And if I need, let's say, 20 clones over here, of course, I'm going to make it, uh, instead of per step, I'm going to go to end point. So the end point, I'm going to lower it down. And uh, I know that my cube is uh, 10 centimeters times 20 count, that would be probably, what, 200? So I have 200 centimeters uh, offset in the Y. That means that every single uh, step is actually feeding correctly next on top of each other. Now, the one towards the back, I just move my X axis in this uh, particular case. And uh, if I want to make those steps very nice and easy to walk. Maybe I can put minus 600 in here, so they are nice and long, okay? Okay, so I have that. And uh, as you can see, if I were to make the cube in the x-axis a little shorter, and if I see it from the side, then I can see the individual steps, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave it at 200, the way I had him initially. Now, for rendering sake, I'm going to go to the cloner and type in here render instances, because as you already know, that's going to speed our rendering. The reason, the reason why I do that is because I'm going to take the cloner again, and I'm going to go to my uh, objects in here, and I'm going to create an instance of that cloner. If you notice, the cloner instance has the cloner already in there, meaning that I just created a clone of the cloner, okay? So now I can easily move it forward, okay? Create the second uh, level of my stairs, and if I just control, drag, and duplicate that instance, I can do exactly the same thing. I could be using another cloner to just uh, clone these uh, instances very easily. Yes, I could do that. Uh, in this case, it's only two clones, so using the cloner probably would be too much of an overkill for this particular example. Now, since uh, now we have the, the stairs, okay, already created. Remember that the stairs, if you want to create more detail on every single a cube, you do it on the particular cube that you used initially. So for example, in here I feel the need to add a little depth on my x-axis, so I'm just going to increase that to 600, and now I have these stairs a little more uh, bulky, okay? That means I, I have more room to have, you know, the, the rest area a little more uh, uh, um, uh, greater in there, the same as over here, okay? Now it feels more like a, a real stairs in which you just walk around, uh, rest a little bit and, and keep on climbing the stairs. Okay, so we have our stairs in here. Uh, now that I have that, I'm just going to group these objects and uh, call them stairs. Now I'm going to create a handrail that goes uh, in, 
from the top to the bottom. So the, the way I do it, I go to the side view, in this case it's called the front view, okay, and I'm going to use my tool, the, the Bezier tool, okay. Uh, I actually could use the linear tool because that, that'll give me a more linear understanding of exactly what I'm doing. So, in here, let's suppose that the handrail starts from this part over here and then it goes down all the way down to the final part of the stairs, okay? So I'm just gonna start in here and if I click and I try to put another point in here, notice that my uh, axis uh, basically don't allow me to click again and put a point in there. So in order for me to get rid of this axis temporarily, I just press the option D for display axis and then I can actually get uh, a little closer to so I can see the grid that I'm working with and uh, let's suppose uh, this is the height that I want maybe like two for about six uh, little grids in here so I just click in there and I start doing my my stairs so I just click in there if I go down here, I count, uh, you know, two, four, six again, maybe over here, and then continue. Make sure that I continue that uh, linear, linear outline of my stairs around here, and then do exactly the same thing over here. Uh, so I'm just going to move forward one and then two, four, six and click around, uh, well actually in the second one over here and uh, all the way over here. So two, four, six and all the way down to the bottom of the stairs. So I just move two squares in here two, four, and six. Okay. Okay, so you could be as uh, detailed or as specific as possible doing this spline. You, you can do it more uh, accurate if you want. Uh, as you can see, I, you know, I'm not too accurate in this case. Anyway, so this is going to be my rail. And my rail, we know, is going to be a little circle. Maybe not that big, of course. So we're going to create that circle, let's say, at uh, five centimeters. Maybe that's good, probably. And these two elements, the spline and the circle, we're going to put it inside our uh, uh, strip nerves. So I just call the strip nerves and take the circle and spline and put them in there. And they should work automatically here. If they don't, that's because your circle might be in the wrong plane uh, direction because it was done in a different uh, location. But it seems like uh, this is fine. Now, one thing that I did to the rail, if you notice here that uh, the, the handrail is very linear because I used the linear spline. Let me just enable the strip nerves and, and this then what, what I did basically is I selected that point and the other points of course so just let me just go and select uh, all these other points oops on this one I didn't even move it down oh so let me just finish that up I didn't finish that up over here so let me just continue here doing something, uh, let me see, so I'm just going to select my spline and I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to go and say create a point, so I create a point in there, now with my selection tool I take this point and move it, as you can see I don't see my uh, axis because I remember that I I was hiding them before, so I press Option D again, so I can get them back. 
and I just move my final point down here. If I need to reset, reposition this, I just select both of them and reposition them in here. Okay. Now, as I was telling you before, then I select all these points from the top part of the handrail and uh, that one too, oh, maybe not not this one and not the last one. So only the, the, the ones in the middle. So if I get really close to it and I want to take the linearity of it uh, to a smoother level, I just right click and I go and say chamfer. I select the chamfer uh, option and once I do that, then I just drag and notice how the two points are created in every single corner. And what they do, if I get close to them, what they do basically is they soften that linearity. And it's doing it all throughout the points that I did. Now, the reason why I didn't select it, the last uh, points of the handrail is because they need an extra curve, a curve a little more, more uh, accentuated than this one over here. So I'm just going to go back to that tool, chamfer, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. But now notice that now my curve is more pronounced than the one I did on every corner. Okay, now that I have that, I can enable back the, the circle and the, the strip nerves. And uh, if you notice problems like this, that's because your circle might be a little too big. So maybe make it uh, four or three. So you don't get those errors in the curves. Okay. Now, if I look at it from here, I think the handrail can be even smaller than that. So maybe like a two. Yeah, that would be fine. For this proportion, that would be fine. Okay, so now the, the curve in here is a little more smooth. Maybe not quite as I would like it to be, but uh, remember, when you apply the chamfer, you can control that. Now, I know that I am going to be placing some uh, uh, cylinders go, uh, pointing down. So now that I know that my circle is two centimeters, I can create actually uh, cylinders of uh, a radius of two centimeters, okay? The cylinder that I have is somewhere in here. So if I bring it out, I can see that I have my cylinder there, okay? So the cylinder is gonna be probably, let me just click again to it, maybe a hundred centimeters tall. And uh, I, I'm just going to place them like so, in here, okay? So I could use a uh, cloner as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select a cloner, okay? The, I, I make sure that the cylinder goes inside the cloner. But then the cloner, I'm going to select the mode to be an object. So I need an object to clone my cylinders. Now the object that I want is the spline that we created. So I'm just gonna bring this plane down and put it into the object, okay? And uh, I'm going to do, let's see how is that working. Okay, as you can see, I have the cloner working, but it's, uh, it has placed all those elements in the, in the actual places that I have uh, uh, points in there. And because I have the count of 10, now, if I look at this count, I can say, select another distribution method, which is even. Now with the even method, I get an even distribution of that. I can even increase that, okay. Now notice that my cloner also has the orientation of my cylinder in the wrong direction. I could go to the cylinder, to the original cylinder and say, okay, change the direction of that to X, but that's not exactly what I need. You know, it changed in some places, but for example, in these particular places, I also want them to be completely vertical, not tilted 
the way they are right now. So what I would do is in the cloner here, I am going to say, uh, let's say, first of all, I'm going to say render instances. And down here, I'm going to say, or turn off the align clone, meaning that I am going to use my own alignment method. Okay. And the way I do that is that by going to the transform tab of my cloner, and then I just make sure that I'm rotating that cloner in the axis that I want. So I can see that it's on the banking, so I just type 90. And also I can move on my Y uh, axis down below to uh, 49 or 50 centimeters. Now every single post of my handrail is uh, vertical and is positioned evenly across the whole uh, thing. Notice that uh, in this case, if we were looking at this uh, end of the stairs like so, we would see the final part. So if you want to be precise, maybe you want to say that, that the height of your uh, cylinder, let's say, make, make it 60, and then just make sure that you place your uh, Y position in the right place, okay? So that should be okay. Now the cylinder seems to be a little too wide for my taste. I'm, I'm just gonna put it 1.6. So it looks like it's part of uh, coming out of the handrail. So maybe 1.8, something like that, okay? Perfect. Now you can play with the uh, distance between the post, as you can see here, these uh, two final ones are two together. You can go to the cloner, and in the cloner you can offset the position of those uh, elements. So if you go back a little bit, notice that uh, I probably have the loop enabled, so disable that. Okay. okay. So I can go something like so, and now I have a complete nice distribution. But of course, I get this trouble over here. So, okay, so I can fix that. Let me just go back to zero, maybe an offset of one. It maybe lower the, the amount of these guys per segment, let's see if I it's an even distribution, okay, 26, okay, and let me just put it in zero, okay, yeah, I probably would uh, lower, there you go adjust the ending of my the ending of my cloning to be here and it should be quite symmetrical throughout okay so now that I have that uh, I recall that I also put lights throughout the whole thing well the lights uh, should be done basically the same way as this cloner so I'm just gonna take this cloner and uh, control duplicate it here and instead of a cylinder I'm just gonna delete that cylinder and uh, bring a light make sure that that light has some uh, shadows okay and that light I'm gonna put it inside that cloner and as you can see automatically it goes in the same exact location as my cylinder the reason why it's going to the cylinder because I had in the cloner a transformation of minus 30 and also a rotation of 90. So we don't need those two parameters. But what we do need is to actually get that light out of that geometry. Okay, There are a couple of ways that we can do it. One is by uh, taking the cloner and adjusting precisely this movement. So it is out, okay. 
Or another one is uh, actually telling the light not to look at the handrail. But we won't do that today. We just uh, want to make sure that the light is positioned right underneath, just the way it is right now, underneath the handrail, so it doesn't uh, the handrail doesn't interfere with the illumination of the light. So you can be precise. So let's uh, make it something like so. Okay. okay. So if I render something like this, then I should uh, well I should get something. But what happened? is that my cloner that I use from the cylinders, if you remember, I had it in render instances, and the lights are those uh, elements or objects that doesn't like to be an instance for rendering because then it doesn't illuminate. So now the light uh, should be in there illuminating. Now, usually lights have kind of like a like a dissolve or a something they call it in here the fall off so i just go ahead and select the second option called inverse square physical accurate fall off and uh, if i render again now they're going to be very bright but then i'm just going to lower the decay let's say to 50 and if i render then I can see those lights in there. And I, I just tweak this parameter, let's say to 75. And now I have a full illumination of that. Now notice that in here, some of the lights actually didn't get out of the geometry as this one is. So I can still go to my cloner, transform, and uh, make sure that I, I do have something like this, moving them down a little more. Okay. And now they should also illuminate perfectly fine and create the shadows as you can see. Now, because the this cloner is uh, the cloner for the cylinders and this other cloner is the cloner of the lights. Okay. And this strip nerves is the handrail that means all these three elements should probably be grouped together. So I just group them and call it the handrail. Okay. Now let's try uh, and creating an instance of that and moving that instance to the left and control copy, create another instance to all the other opposite side of the stairs and try rendering to see if uh, that instance actually renders the light and it does. So this type of instance that do render the lights but the instance inside the cloner doesn't. Okay, I hope that's very explicit for you and uh, let's place this correctly in here. In this case I don't see the stairs so I'm just going to change my display to something like I can see it more clearly to place my objects because once you add lights to your scene you start losing the visibility in there okay so sometimes you gotta just change the display option to something else now if I render I should have a full set of stairs with three handrails that uh, they were pretty simple to to, to do okay Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please let me know if you have any questions about it. Okay, bye-bye.